James Carafano is the director of the Allison Center for Foreign Policy Studies at the Heritage Foundation. He's a national security researcher, but he's also bringing a unique perspective. He helped train officers of the Egyptian army during his 25-year U.S. military career. And returning back to Street Smart, uh, Ed Ganim, he's a former U.S. ambassador to Jordan and now a George uh, Washington University professor. Uh, gentlemen, great to have you both here uh, with us. Ambassador Ganim, let me start with you. Lots of joy, lots of celebration uh, in Cairo and in Egypt today. But do we need to be cautious because there's a lot of work still to be done to move forward here? Oh, absolutely right. There is a lot of work. Getting from here to there is going to take a big effort on the part of a lot of parties. I, I think they're going to get there. I think the military uh, is committed to seeing reform. But I also would, would say that the military is going to want to be sure that they are also taken care of in the end. Uh, they have, have been now for, uh, for 50, 60 years. Uh, they will continue to be a big powerhouse in Egypt. Jim, let's bring you into this discussion because you've worked with the military. What don't we necessarily understand or know about the military at this point? Well, you know, actually, I think, you know, my experience working with Egyptian officers is, is very reflective of what we've actually seen the role of the military play. They've been very, very professional, very patriotic, but also very cautious. You saw this very incremental strategy where, you know, the, the military would agree to something, they'd make some concessions, then they'd sit back, see what the street did. If that wouldn't enough, they'd do a little more. And we've actually seen this progression all week now, and I'm sure that's going to continue. Uh, I think the ambassador's right. At the end of the day, the military's going to want to get taken care of. So there's a couple of concerns there. One is, is will they move fast enough for people? That's one. Two is, will the military stay cohesive or will they start to fracture? That would be a problem. So there, there's, there's still a lot of very unknown territory out there ahead. Well, and Ambassador Ghanim, what does it mean when you say the military wants to be taken care of? You're saying that they want to be uh, still involved in the process of change there in Egypt? Well, I, I, I will take my remarks off of what Jim just said, because they are a very well-respected institution and a very large one in Egyptian society, going back to uh, 1952. And so they have a prominence in society. They're involved in, in a lot of economic uh, 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 efforts, factories and whatever. And, and they are a social system. Uh, they really have taken care of themselves, and they've done well. And what I meant was that they're going to preserve that status in society in the country, and I think the country will permit that. Uh, I also believe that Jim is absolutely right that the, the move forward, let's remember, the move forward depends a great deal on what decisions are going to be made uh, by the military, because they are in charge now uh, over this process, because they're already on the edge of being outside the Constitution. Mm. They haven't moved there yet, but they are in that edge. So how then do they set up a system, a process, that will in fact amend the Constitution appropriately to permit elections uh, at a time frame that's acceptable? Uh, that's, that that is a big issue because the Constitution as written would force things to move far faster than in fact they can. Well, Jim, what do you think is an acceptable yeah. timeline here? Well, I, you know, I think from, from uh, the perspective of the people of Egypt, the longer the timeline, the better, because there are a lot of secular groups and, and, a, and a wide spectrum of, of voices in Egypt that need time to organize and reform and get ready to go forward. You know, I think the unwritten story here is this is largely about bread and butter issues. Uh, pe people in Egypt want a better life, and that means economic freedom. And, you know, the military is a great force of stability, but they're not going to be the engine of economic change and economic freedom in that country, and neither is the Muslim Brotherhood. So if we're going to see the kind of people that can really lead Egypt into the future emerge, they're going to need time to get their act together. Ambassador, I think he's, go I, ahead, please. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I think he's right, quite right about that. I, I do not. I, I think the, the Egyptian military, is, as I said, was quite respected. They don't want to run the government. They are not in, interested in that. They are, they're professionals. They know what they are in society and what they want to do. So uh, they're going to have to have a system in which the rest of the population, in fact, can be ready. And I mentioned the Constitution. It actually demands that if the president resigns, that there be elections within 60 days. And, of course, the acting president uh, becomes either the speaker of the Parliament, uh, or becomes, if he's not available, the uh, the chief judge of the Supreme uh, of the Constitutional Court. Sorry. So, you know, it, they may use those institutions, but still, they're not going to be able to have elections in 60 days. They're not going to have. Yeah, are, I mean, that, are protesters going to be okay with that's that? That's not the best. Go ahead, Jim. 
Well, that's not the best deal in the world because, you know, if you had an election in 60 days right now, the, who are the best organized people in the country? Well, mm -hmm. on the one hand, it's Mubarak's old cronies, and on the other hand, it's, it's group like the Muslim Brotherhood, who, you know, may not be terrorists, but look, they have a political agenda, uh, and, and they certainly have no interest in promoting economic freedom. But, gentlemen, I yeah, mean, my, will, my the point will, exactly. the, will the protesters be comfortable, though, waiting beyond 60 days? As, as we know, in terms of the reaction we got yesterday when it looked like Mubarak was staying till September, uh, they were not happy. They want to change quick, much more quickly. I mean, will the protesters be happy waiting potentially two, three, four months here? Ambassador, well, I think so. That, 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 I think so. They were. Ambassador uh, they were, no, they were concerned is, about Mubarak staying in office and uh, knowing and not having any confidence at all that he would actually bring about reform. I think if, as long as there's movement to change the Constitution and make those reforms and set up a system for elections, uh, yes, the, the population can tolerate that and would, would support that. And Jim, forgive me, why don't you weigh in on that as well? No, I, no, but he, that, I, I totally agree. But here's the one danger is, here's what the military's done is, is, is when things haven't been calm, they've given a little more. So the opposition's not stupid. There are going to be parts of the opposition that want to move further and faster. And so their instinct is going to be, well, if we push a button on the military, mm -hmm. they'll give us a little more. So, uh, and, you know, you have an opposition that's united only in wanting to get men of Mubarak. Now that's happened, and kind of now everybody's going to be after their own agenda. So... The path forward is certainly not not clear, but I, I do agree. You know, slower would be better. It would give the the the, the, the spectrum of voices more time to organize and participate in the political process. Gentlemen, we've got less than a minute left here. Ambassador Ghanim, if you were advising the president, what needs to be the U.S. policy right now? And just if you could do that in about 20, 30 seconds. Well, he should support the, the reform effort and to use the relationship we have with the military and that good relationship to influence them to move things forward in that way. Jim, uh, a few seconds left here for you. What do you want to yeah, see coming out of the thing, administration? The last, the last thing he can do is pretend like the crisis is over and then and shift his attention. He needs to stay engaged in this, and he needs to stay engaged in the Middle East broadly. He cannot take his eye off the ball in the months and years ahead. Right. Still so much to be done. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Ambassador uh, Edward Ganim joining us, and also uh, joining us is Jim Carafano. Guys, thank you so much.